All right, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through setting up Lab 7, Reflection of Light. Uh, this is the thermal sensor version. All right, so for this lab, you'll need a thermal sensor with the lightning extension cable. Uh, you'll need a LabQuest and a light sensor, but you won't use those right away. So you can actually set your LabQuest and light sensor off to the side for the first part of this. Um, take a, a dry towel and you're gonna set that down on your table. Light bulb is that I grab is the clear 150 watt light bulb socket and you're gonna need to attach that and clamp that to one of the supporting structures. Um, you'll, you'll use your iPad. The app that you're gonna use is the FLIR1 app and that is, um, I put that in the iTunes U course so you don't have to go to the App Store. You could go to the App Store, but it's also in our iTunes U course just to make sure you get the, the right one. And then grab three of these containers with caps and then three different uh, samples. So aluminum foil, uh, white paper, and black paper. All right, so we want to compare and contrast the uh, the amount of heat absorption and light reflection for these three different paper samples. So I'm going to get that set up now. I'm actually going to clear off some space and in the area of my desk where I've got the light bulb, that's where I'm going to place the dry towel directly under that light bulb. Okay, that's just like a thermal insulator basically from the cold table. I'm going to take my three containers and I'm gonna get those set up uh, directly under my light bulb. And I'm gonna actually bring the light bulb down just to make sure that I've got it, uh, got those three containers like centered exactly below the light bulb, which is you know perfectly vertical. Because it's gonna make a difference if I have it off to the side, it won't work very well. So that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna raise it up. And I wanna raise it about 15 centimeters. So you can check 15 centimeters with, um, with one of the half meter sticks that we have in the classroom. All right, and then I'm gonna take my paper samples and I'm gonna carefully place those um, on the container covers. And the aluminum foil, I don't know if you realize this or not, but it has a shiny side and a dull side. I can put the shiny side up. Probably wouldn't matter, but that's just how I'm gonna run this. And then I'm just gonna make sure that, I'm gonna kind of move to the side and make sure that it's centered. Cause again, I want the center of the light bulb to be to the center of the three of these. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so now here is, I'm gonna get the thermal camera set up. This is gonna be hard to demonstrate, but I'm gonna do my best here. I'm gonna open up the FLIR1 app. All right, and you're gonna to get to a screen where it says, please attach your FLIR1 camera and turn it on. That's the thermal sensor. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I plugged the thermal camera in. Thermal camera, this is the side of it that you're gonna to use to take pictures of. There's a regular camera and a thermal image camera. All right, so then I'm gonna use the side button and I'm just gonna turn that on. All right, and then it should just pop up with a, uh, with a thermal image on the screen. I'm pointing it at myself here just so I can see if it's gonna work. All right, so there I am. It's a little bit sideways. That's not gonna matter. The orientation and stuff doesn't matter. Um, what I actually want to do though is I want to um, image of the, the heat image of these three um, sample papers. So I'm actually going to swing the light bulb off to the side. And again, it might be hard to demonstrate this. I'm just going to hover this above the three samples. Notice that it's not the thermal image isn't totally lining up with the um, the real image there. And actually, there's my iPad, the thermal image showing the heat signature of my iPad there. Um, I'm actually gonna move my iPad off to the side a little bit so that doesn't get in the way. What I need to show you, I guess I'll leave it in here for this, this demonstration. What I need to show you is that it doesn't exactly line up, so I'm gonna tap the screen and then I'm going to 
um, move the adjustment bar so that the thermal image and the actual outline of the actual image are in line with each other. So tapping the screen and moving that slider toggle bar is going to help out a lot. So I'm going to get that off out of the way a little bit. Well, I'll leave it in for this demonstration. All right, when you have a good uh, image lined up, hit the photo button. Kind of hard to sense, center it there. There we go. All right. So there's my initial thermal image. I can, um, yeah. I'm going to select that image, which is right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, select the edit button. Actually, let me cancel out. If I, I'm just going to show you, if I drag this down, I can, um, I can see which paper sample was which. So um, in my data table, when I want the starting temperature of the white paper, that's there, black paper and aluminum foil. And I can get that starting temperature from my image. I'm going to move the temperature cursor. To get the temperature to pop up, you just select it. Um, if it pops up as Celsius, I'll just show you quick, um, in the settings, so in the main area, if you tap the settings button, you can select the temperature units to Celsius. I guess I'm not overly concerned if you use Celsius or Fahrenheit, I just wanted to show you that um, traditionally we use Celsius for all of our labs, so you can, you can select that. Again, selecting the edit button, I can move that to the center. So this, in my data table, I'm going to write 25.4 as the temperature for the white paper. Should be similar. Yep, 25.5 is the starting temperature of the black paper. Lumen foil is really tricky. Um, it depends on where you kind of move around on there. Um, I probably I'm going to recommend just taking a temperature reading from the center as well, 25.4, which, so all three of these have basically um, 25.4 as a starting temperature, which makes sense because I haven't run the experiment yet. They should all have a very similar, if not identical, uh, thermal image and temperature. Okay, so now let's run this lab for five minutes and then see what our temperature increases are for each paper sample. So bring the light bulb in again, double check that it's in line. And then on my, on my iPad, I'm just gonna open up a clock and I'm just gonna set a, a timer for five minutes. Don't I'm gonna turn the light bulb on, hit start, and let five minutes go by. All right, so my timer's almost up here. So at the end of five minutes, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the Floor One app is open and you're gonna to wanna to be on the screen uh, where the actual image comes up. Make sure your camera's on, it'll, it'll turn off. I'm gonna turn the light off since five minutes is up. Your camera will turn off after a few minutes if it's not in use, so you might have to turn it back on again. I'm gonna swing the light bulb away, as far away as I can from my setup. Okay, looks like the camera's, looks like the camera's working again, so that's good. And again, I'm gonna hover over my my three samples looks like it's not in line again, so I'm gonna ta I'm gonna tap on the screen and I'm going to and so I'm gonna tap on the screen here and I'm gonna line up the thermal image with the actual image so that it's looks good there. All right, and when I get my three samples in the view there. All right, then I'll take my picture. All right. Then I'm gonna go to that picture. And I'm gonna, whoops, make sure you know what's what. So aluminum foil, white paper, black paper, and so on. And I'm gonna take the final temperature. So white paper, black paper, and again, aluminum foil is just gonna be tricky to find it. Um, so maybe I'll 
kind of just move this around and kind of eyeball what the various temperatures are and maybe take an average or whatever I think is most accurate. So I'm actually probably going to get maybe that darker area, 26.5. So again, white paper, black paper, aluminum foil. So write down those final temperatures. So you can save that image um, and have the temperature on a different area. Um, but what it would be nice to do is it'd be nice if you sent the image, whoops, send the image, um, save it to your photos, and you can include that on your data write-up. You can share it with your lab partners too. I understand that not every uh, person in the lab group is going to have this saved on the FLIR1 app because not everyone's going to have their thermal sensor connected. All right, this is how to get the light reflection value in LUX, which is the unit for that. Um, so what I've done here is I've attached a light sensor to a clamp, all right, to my supporting structure there. And I've got the, the sen excuse me, I've got the sensor itself pointed like directly at the paper off to the side, obviously, because um, it has to be away from the bulb. But I mean, if I turn the light bulb on here, you know, the sensor is basically aiming at the center spot on that white paper. So I've got it all set up. I've got this very close, probably within an inch, so a couple centimeters away. And then all I need to do at this point is, well, make sure that the toggle setting uh, is arranged like zero to 6,000. Works pretty well for this, so make sure that the sensor's on that. Um, but you're just going to write down that in your data table. So like, for example, 2350 is the number I'd write down for the white paper. And then I'd just remove the white paper, replace it with another of the samples. So black paper, you can see it again, it's it's aimed right at the black paper there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and write down the lux, the reflection value of light, for the black paper in my data table. Remove the black paper. And then add the third sample, which is aluminum foil here. Getting a much higher reading there, so aluminum foil is extremely reflective. So it should have a lot of light going back. It's also highly variable. So if you end up moving this around a little bit, you're gonna get some pretty different numbers. Um, so just, you know, make sure that you're, you're getting um, a reasonable, you might have to spend more time with the aluminum foil. It should be uh, a reflection value for the aluminum foil that's higher than the white paper and the black paper. So again, there's the setup for just getting a a light value reading through data table. And I, I, I did move away um, these so that I just said it was doing one at a time there.